Good morning, New Zealand. Meanwhile, here on home soil, the sleeping giants of the NPC are set to spring out of hibernation tonight. In the past, Waikato has been accused of being too predictable, but you can't say that about the side so far this year. As Stephen Stewart reports, the Mulus, without the burden of defending the Ranfilly Shield, are now starting to look menacing. In tonight's special report, reaction to the Clinton crisis. If Bill Clinton is impeached, the people who will decide his fate are the congressmen and women on Capitol Hill. CNN's Candy Crawley takes the pulse of Washington's politicians in this report. News conferences and briefings are cheek to jowl. Good evening, I'm Liz Gunn and this is Late Edition. Tonight, New Zealand cricket calls off contract negotiations with its players and prepares to field whomever it can get against India next month. And a poignant Melbourne Cup win for a champion jockey. But leading Late Edition, the turmoil and potential disasters surrounding our summer game. There's only one month before the season's first big international against India. And after players rejected New Zealand cricket's latest pay offer this afternoon, there may be no top cricketers available to play. Lisa Glass reports. The announcement may not have been unexpected. Elvis loved it so much he bought two houses there. Steven Spielberg was so impressed he filmed Jurassic Park there. But what did Kate Humble make of America's 50th state when she checked in on Waikiki Beach, Hawaii? Take a look at this. That's Maharaj. Wouldn't you love to be able to dance like that, Mike? If only, eh? I, <laughs> I lack the fundamental flexibility. <laughs> keep trying. It keeps stretching. And that's a taste of what's on the Royal New Zealand Ballets program as it hits the road today. Now, it is off on the six-week tour that we'll see it taking curtain calls from Kerry Kerry to Invercargill. That's not bad. And 44 other towns and cities in between. And the tour is a step back in time for the ballet company, a return to its traditional touring roots of the 1950s. Interestingly enough, the tour coincides with the release here of the hugely successful movie Billy Elliot. The movie about a young boy's determination to become a ballet dancer recently picked up three BAFTAs, including Best British Film and the Best Actor Award for 14-year-old Jamie Bell. So to tell us how real Billy Elliot's story actually is, and with more on that nationwide tour, I'm joined by the Royal New Zealand Ballet's Artistic Director, Matt Skoog, and male dancer Richard Longbottom. Welcome to you both. Good morning. Good nice morning. to have you here. Now let's, let's, let's start with that. We saw a bit of Maharaja and it looks wonderful. Tell us some more of what's going to be in this nationwide tour program. Well, good morning, New Zealand, and welcome, especially if you've just joined us, to breakfast. It's Wednesday, the 1st of August. A bit lonely today. Mike is going, of course, to be preparing for the Knowledge Wave program tonight, and Peter is sunning himself somewhere in Australia. So coming up this hour with me, if education holds the key to a prosperous society, a prosperous New Zealand, what does our education system need to do to catch this much-talked-about, much-hyped Knowledge Wave? We discuss this after the news. The Royal Commission gives GM a cautious green light. May Chen's been looking at the four books of findings, her analysis of this contentious issue, at 20 past eight. And then we'll meet the winners of the prestigious Montana Book Awards at 20 to nine. And before nine, books, of course, with Corrie Dark. First, though, here's Kate with One News. And now we've got Liz Gum sitting with her travelling companions on Oxford Terrace, I guess, in uh, Christchurch. Hello, Liz. Hi, Paul. Lovely to talk to you again. And actually, it's not Oxford Terrace. It's something called The Strip, which is not what it sounds. It's a line of highly respectable cafes here in Christchurch. It's a wonderful Christchurch evening. I couldn't have done anything that I've done over the last 30 hours, especially coping with the lack of sleep without the team. Oh, thank you. A friend called Rochelle has brought for our cameraman, Rod Delaxon, a birthday cake because it's his 25th birthday today. Welcome back. The six Auckland teenagers convicted of killing pizza delivery man Michael Choi were today sentenced to a total of almost 60 years behind bars. The youngest, who's just 13 years old, Bailey Kurariki, will be locked away for seven years. His lawyer, Frank Hogan, had harsh words today in court for child, youth and family, which was supposed to be looking after Kurariki at the time of the killing. He joins me now. Welcome. Thank First, you, your reaction to the seven years. It's a, seven, it's a solid sentence, no, no doubt about that. It's a, it must represent a, a very long period for a young man to face 
you're likely to appeal, and if so, on what grounds? Yes, the, the, the appeal will be advanced on two grounds, one against the conviction itself and one in respect of the severity of the sentence that was imposed. All right. New sentencing legislation came into force in this country in July. What do you think Bailey would have been sentenced to had this trial taken place pre-July? It's difficult to predict with certainty. All I can say is it appears we're in a, in a shakedown period as to how... Can you go back a step? How was he during the trial? Because there were some reports in the media that he saw himself as a bit of a hero. How accurate was that? No, that's, that's not so. Sure, there's been a lot of attention on as a lawyer, are you seeing more Baileys? Is he just the tip of the iceberg? Yeah, yeah to some extent. Why? You, you said today well, society is to some extent in the dock. We are all diminished by the fact that one so young is to be sentenced for a crime yeah. so serious. It, these are very wide issues, but, but, but plainly as a society we've, we've, we've concentrated on, on acquisition of goods, acquis acquisition of power and the like at the expense of... of family values, at the expense of nourishing and disciplining our children in a full and caring manner. And uh, to some extent, the, the, the Baileys of this world are the, are the consequences of, of a society that basically uh, has lost its way. Frank Hogan, thank you. You're welcome. After Kururiki was sentenced, One News reporter Karen Rutherford sat down with two of the convicted killer's siblings. While they say they share some responsibility, they also believe their brother was let down by child, youth and family. The latest One News, Brunton opinion poll results suggest that when it comes to the economy, the mood in New Zealand has returned to its pre-September the 11th state. Now, the terrorist attacks on the US sent economies into a downward slide, of course, uh, but our poll shows we are recovering with economic optimism up 7 to 45 per cent, pessimism down 6 to 36. But what do the economists think? Does the poll show blissful ignorance or can we begin the new year with confidence, real confidence for the months ahead? Economists Peter Conway, Gareth Morgan and Tim Preston join me now. Welcome to you all. Reaction from each of you beginning to the, to the poll, to the optimism that's out there. What about you, Tim? Uh, not surprised at all. Very consistent with what we've been seeing, particularly over the last two or three months. Net migration flows. Now that's positive. That's, that's good. That is good. OK, quick reaction from you, Gareth Morgan, to this optimism in the Colmar Brunton poll. Well, I agree. I mean, after September the 11th. Peter Conway, that is interesting. Post-September the 11th, we haven't seen anything like the scale of redundancies that have, we've seen in overseas countries. Were you surprised that we seem so cosseted over here? No, not at all surprised. I think that to some extent we were floating along in our own bubble. We can hang on to staff. It's not going to be a huge uh, gap to bridge. Gareth Morgan, do you think it's too early to say definitively we're over the September the 11th flow on? There could be a bit of a lag before it hits in in New Zealand. Well, um, I think overseas. It's midday. In this extended bulletin, Princess Diana comes home for the last time. Britain mourns as the body of Princess Diana arrives back home. French police mount an intense investigation into the exact cause of Diana's fatal crash. And paparazzi photographers are detained as media harassment causes widespread anger. I always believed the press would kill her in the end. Angry words today from the brother of Diana, Princess of Wales. Earl Spencer's anger is directed at the paparazzi who chased Diana to her death in a Parisian tunnel yesterday. But it's a privilege to welcome Helen, who has been sitting on the motorway for something like two hours. Helen Clark, is that right? Absolutely. Now, two hours on the hut motorway. <laughs> we've had a day full of gremlins. But what do you do when you're stressed? You're in the middle of, of a full day, just before Christmas. You're held up for two hours. How do you calm yourself? Thank heavens for mobile phones. It's an amazing game, politics, looking on at it. It reminds me of Stanley Baldwin, I think it was, who said, I would rather be an opportunist, opportunist and float than go to the bottom with my principles around my neck. In politics, is that always tempting, to think I've just got to survive at any cost, which some people would look at certain politicians right now and say that's what's happened? I think it has been survival at any cost for those who've gone in with Mr Peters because his demands were preposterous and they were conceded. But in the end, what are we in politics for? Are we there for ourselves, for holding a position, having the ministerial house and cars, or are we there for a cause? I've always been there for a cause. Well, it was all eyes to the Wellington skies tonight as thousands readied themselves for a public Guy Fawkes display. 
As darkness fell, a powder keg of entertainment was unleashed over the capital. So we leave you tonight with some fiery pictures from the harbour display. Peter's back tomorrow night, but from me, a very good night to you.